I remember many a morning or afternoon from the age of 15, catching a train to and from school with no internet squashed against the train doors among dozens of people, but I had Sonic 2 on my iPhone 3GS. Don't laugh, it's 2015, that's the phone I had. There are many things to love about the first Sonic games. Is it the momentum-based gameplay? Is it the music? Is it the hedgy with the attitude? Or is it the ability to completely break the levels by creating infinite objects and placing them all over the place and completely change the rules of how you played? It's always fun to see what the devs leave hidden inside their games to be discovered. Sonic 1 didn't have save files, meaning you needed to play the whole game in a single sitting. Unless you discovered the hidden level select. Here you can choose any level or act as well as play sounds. Sonic 2 also had a level select and sound test with a more streamlined look which carried over to Sonic 3. But today we are talking about the remastered games and the special features in their debug menus. From mobile to mania and I suppose origins. Let's get started. I can't praise Christian Whitehead and Simon Tomley enough on the quality of these mobile ports. I have to note, later into their lifespans, these were updated to be free, which includes ads. Yuck. Oh my god, why do you want to know my age? That's so creepy. Thankfully, you can pay a dollar or two to get rid of them, and that's more than worth it. Don't say you can't afford that. There is no way on this planet that it can be worth it for you playing these games with ads just to avoid paying a dollar or two. When you go to the file select and choose no save mode, when the Sega logo appears, quickly Sega! press each letter of Sega in order and you will hear a ring sound. Once the title screen appears, hold both thumbs on either side of the screen, and the level select will open. I would later learn that to do this in Origins, which doesn't have touch input, you need to use the D-pad. Sonic 1, up, down, left, right, just like the original game. And for Sonic 2, up, 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 down, 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 left, right, left, right. Turns out this can also work on the mobile versions if you have a controller connected. For those of you who didn't know, you can connect a controller to your phone. But if you tap the Sega letters backwards, A-G-E-S, it changes Tails' name to Miles on anything that would display it. For controllers, it's up, down, 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 up. And if you do this in Sonic 1, it shows the hidden credits screen. The menus for both Sonic 1 and 2 use the Sonic 2 style menu. In Sonic 1, there's a bunch of general options here. You can choose your player, 00 is Sonic with Tails, 01 is Sonic, 02 is Tails, and 03 is Knuckles. A fun little detail I love in Sonic 1, which originally didn't have Tails or Knuckles, has these little custom title screens made from the sprites of Sonic 2 and Sonic 2 and Knuckles. You can also manually turn on and off the spin dash, as the original Sonic 1 didn't have that. Ground speed cap and air speed cap put limiters on Sonic's ground and air speeds respectively, which were present in the original game and is why Sonic feels a lot stiffer there by comparison. Like the spin dash, you can manually enable or disable them. And then there's S1 spikes. Normally with the classic Sonic games, when Sonic gets damaged, he has brief invincibility while he flickers, but in Sonic 1, landing on spikes after taking damage kills you instantly. And just like the latter, this can be enabled or disabled too. But it's kind of weird, Sonic Origins added a classic mode that's intended to play more like the Mega Drive Genesis original, but it's just the remasters in 4x3 without the Origins editions of the coin system and drop dash. In Sonic 1, you can still spin dash, but the options for spin dash, speed caps, and S1 spikes are just sick sitting here and they didn't think to enable them by default. I mean, yes, you can enable them yourself by opening the debug level select, but if you have to go out of your way to make it more like the original game, why even add a classic mode? Items you can change from S1 to S2, which pretty much changes the shield from the Sonic 1 style to the Sonic 2 style, or plus S3, which replaces the shield outright with elemental shields from Sonic 3, abilities and all, and conveniently place where they are needed most. And best yet, even grants Sonic the Insta Shield ability. Last but not least is Max Emeralds, which lets you change the max amount of emeralds you collect from 6 to 7, allowing you to gain access to Super Sonic, who's not normally available in Sonic 1. Using this with Tails as a partner and the Sonic 3 items enabled is my favorite way to play this game. It's like a whole new experience. Sonic 2's menu does not have these options listed under the levels, but rather in a smaller pop up window with icons to show the player and items. Unlike Sonic 1, you can play as Knuckles with Tails as a partner, and you can choose to use used a randomized item box from two player verses. There are on-off buttons for Tails Flight, which was introduced in Sonic 3, not 2, and for Air Cap, with Grand Cap not being a thing in Sonic 2, which is why Sonic feels like he moves much faster than the first game on original hardware. Sound Test allows you to play back every music track or sound effect. Weirdly enough, Origins changed it so that if you press the same sound multiple times, it doesn't restart, which can throw you off.
But playing numbers 0 through 7 lets you choose which special stage you select, with Sonic 1 having a hidden 7th one, and Sonic 2 having a hidden 8th one. Plus, Sonic 1 has an 8th one as well that lets you build a custom one using debug mode. Speaking of which, the sound test can also be used to input codes, the most iconic of which is debug mode. For Sonic 1, enter 19910623, Sonic 1's Japanese release date. And for Sonic 2, 19921124 for Sonic 2's worldwide release. Left behind by the devs for testing in the Mega Drive games, debug mode allows you to hover freely across levels and place objects and enemies and parts of the environment. Nobody messes with tails. With the touchscreen controls, you can touch the left side of the upper screen to switch to object mode, but annoyingly, in an update, they made doing so also trigger the pause screen. I'd like it if they fix that. There are so many objects present here that weren't even in the original games kindly added by Christian and Simon, that have been made fully functional such as in Sonic 1, the rolling boulder scene in the beta of Green Hill, Splats the Bunny who was a cut badnik who didn't make it to the final game, but still had merch made back in the 90s, who was kindly brought back in Sonic Mania. There are also new monitor boxes, jumping on them will activate some of the previous options like the spikes, elemental shields, and activating all emeralds, or a box that just turns you super into Instantly. But there's also another that appears if you are in Labyrinth Zone. This box gives Sonic a pair of goggles, the sprites of which were unused in the original game. Sonic now wears these while underwater until damaged. And they also brought this back in Sonic Mania during the cutscenes where Sonic flies the tornado. In Sonic 2, the monitors from Verse Multiplayer are present, as well as two unused badniks seen in the prototype of the game, and an earlier version of Buzz Bomber. Also, specifically in Aquatic Ruin, there's a green variant of the Grounder Badnik. This isn't unused from the original game, but is more a cheeky reference to Grounder from the cartoon Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Shame we can't see it alongside a Coconuts and a Clucker Badnik, eh? Now, a really cool thing about this version of Sonic 2 is that it restored a cut level that was seen in the prototype Hidden Palace Zone, not to be confused with the zone of the same name in Sonic and Knuckles, it took me by surprise when I first found this by accident. New full layout, enemies, boss, but... Did you know the original version from that prototype is also here? After enabling debug mode, you need to add another code. 333, the track used in Hidden Palace. B, the track used in Mr. Cave where you find Hidden Palace. 101010, the music used in the Simon Y build. And 04. Its title will be replaced with Proto Palace Zone, the original, unfinished version of this level from the Nick Arcade and Simon Y prototypes. Now, some of you watching may be trying to do this on Sonic Origins. Well, I have some news for you. You can't. You can try and input the code, and it will make a ring sound, but uh, you will not be able to load Proto Palace because, out of the many things Origins devs didn't do, they actually went out of their way to remove it. Yeah. Anyway, the layout is exactly the same as the prototype, Tails monitor and all. If you get to the end without falling through the water to your death, you are greeted with a big emerald sprite sitting on top of a pipe that's breakable in the main level. Standing on top of it warps you back to the level select. If you use debug mode to float past this pipe, it doesn't really go anywhere, but there is a lot more to this level, clearly unfinished in disconnected chunks. You know, supposedly, the original intent of this level is that you would arrive here after collecting the seven Chaos Emeralds, and it would be here you were granted Supersonic, but they decided to cut out the middleman and make Supersonic available once you have the Emeralds. What if standing on the big Emerald that warps you is what was supposed to give you Supersonic originally? Come to think of it, Big Green Emerald giving you a super form sounds oddly familiar. Maybe. Just maybe the concept was reused for Sonic and Knuckles, where we were introduced to the Master Emerald that upgrades Supersonic into Hypersonic, and that location just happens to also be called Hidden Palace Zone. It's just my theory, I could be wrong, but you never know. Another code, 4126, enables all emeralds and lets you have Supersonic from the get-go. And it works on both Sonic 1 and 2. This won't be the last we've seen of it. Before moving on, I wanted to make a note that in the mobile version of Sonic 2, there was an unused stage called Egg Gauntlet Zone, which would have been a boss rush. Thankfully, this version of the game did have a boss rush mode in its time attack, and Egg Gauntlet would be removed from the game's files in a future update. Also, I wanted to fit in here that the mobile versions altered some boss arenas based on the screen size of the device you have. But in Sonic Origins, this boss rush didn't carry over. Instead, all four games got an original boss rush mode. And Sonic 1 and 2 no longer had their time attack, but they left time attack in Sonic CD.
Okay, look, you've seen my Origins video, you already know there's a lot of things they did that didn't make much sense. Moving on, let's check out Sonic Mania. Sonic Mania is an original game and not a remaster, but it was built on the retro engine, so it counts. In Mania, debug mode and level select, instead of using a secret code or inputs, is actually an unlockable for collecting medals. Enable it in-game in the options menu and hold Y and start. Or I guess X on Xbox and square on PlayStation. Ugh. Supposedly on the Switch version only, you can hold Y, then press another button to get the menu from the title, but I can't make it work. This menu is also designed after Sonic 2 and doesn't feature extra options. You can press Y to scroll through the characters, and when on Sonic you can press X to toggle Tails as a partner. I guess it ain't the day for Team Nux and Tails. You can't even select Knuckles as a partner. Oh man! Originally, using the Sonic 3 level select on this random hook played a voice clip from YouTuber video game Donkey. I, I don't know why. Later on, this was patched out. Using debug mode, you can explore areas and zones you were not intended to. The one that fascinates me the most is Lava Reef Act 2. Past the Knuckles boss where the capsule is, there's a tube that you'd teleport up in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Fly up there and find this extra area. Walk forward and it's the place where Sonic and Knuckles fought each other. Just the mural is missing its graphics. And just past there is another Master Emerald Shrine, just a bit lower than where it was in 3K. It's really difficult to see because the camera keeps adjusting itself. There were some features in the game that could only be turned on by use of a mod loader on PC, but later they would all be discovered as functioning codes in sound test. No, not that sound test. 4126 works as dead on Sonic 1 and 2 and unlocks Supersonic from the get-go. You can also disable Supersonic's theme by playing the code in reverse, 6214. Not done with Supersonic yet. In the final boss, while in mid-air, Supersonic has a flight ability. Why not enable that in the main game with Sonic Mania's release date? 201-70815. It even works with the other characters, even if they're not supposed to fly. Sonic 2's debug code from before grants you 14 continues. A little bit random. 201806623, Sonic's birthday, changes Mania mode to Encore mode. It does not work if you do not have Sonic Mania Plus. In the options menu, you can choose to have a playthrough with one of three of Sonic's abilities, Mania's Drop Dash, 3's Insta Shield, or CD's Kill Out. But why not have them all at once? 9001 does just that. Playing 19790811, which is Stealth's birthday apparently, replaces all animals with Ricky. Okay, but why? To unlock all medals from the get-go, put in 19890501, which is another birthday from Mania's team, Hunter Bridges, but only after putting in the Ricky code, but only after putting in the inputs for Sonic 3's original level select on Mania's title screen, which gives you the debug option without needing to unlock it. Oh yeah, that's not super involved at all. As of recording this, Sonic Mania has been decompiled by Rubber Ducky Cooley, and since then people have already started using it to port Sonic Mania to new platforms such as the PS Vita, the Nintendo 3DS, and even the Wii U. Uh, I look forward to seeing how far this development goes. Moving on from Sonic Mania, we make our return to Sonic Origins. And remember how in my last video I explained you can't choose levels on a complete save anymore, it just drops you at the final boss? Well, in Sonic 1, if you use debug mode at the final boss stage and place either a signpost or an animal capsule to end the level early, it will bring you to the level select you're supposed to get once you beat the game on mobile. I repeat, you need an exploit to get something they shouldn't have removed in the first place. By the way, last time I didn't talk about Blue Spheres mode. Not only is the original Blue Spheres mode present, but there's also a new one featuring new sphere types from Mania, with this pretty cool looking title screen. Very 32X looking. I love this original art. Anyway, on the title screen of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, press up, up, down, down, up, 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 up. And the sound test becomes an option under Player 1 in competition. This menu works pretty similar to Mania as it was built off it. Selecting Player and Tails work the same, and unlike Sonic 1 and 2 in Origin, Tracks actually restart when you keep selecting them, and as always, 4126 enables Supersonic, but putting it in a second time enables Hypersonic, and consistent to the previous game's debug codes, 19941018 is the release date of Sonic and Knuckles, and that pretty much did it for codes in Headcanon's remaster of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, kinda. 
User codename Gamma, who has been known for data mining and modding Sonic Mania, had discovered in the game's code many more sound test codes that were functional but disabled, so you could not activate them without modding. That was until a patch came out, and this was like literally just after I uploaded my last video, and that patch actually re-enables all those codes and didn't bring back Proto Palace Zone in Sonic 2, or Sonic and Amy's voices in Sonic CD. <laughs> But, but, nah, nah, this is cool, I guess. Some of these are leftovers from Mania, and some of them are new. Sonic 1's debug code replaces elemental shields with normal shields bearing their Sonic 2 appearance. Sonic 2's debug code gives you infinite continues. Um, I guess Headcanon didn't know the Origins team would remove those, but yeah, you can still try that in classic mode. The code that gives you all of Sonic's abilities at once isn't here, but in its place is 19930923, Sonic CD's Japanese release date, which grants you the peel-out, which stacked on top of this version of Sonic 3 already having both the Insta Shield and Drop Dash gives you all three abilities anyway. Be cool if Sonic 1 and 2 had that. How about Sonic 3's US release? It turns Sonic 3 and Knuckles into just Sonic 3. Well, not really, it just removes and Knuckles from everywhere. Left over from Sonic Mania, the Egg Reverie flying code still worked. Soar far above the skies of Angel Island, and all shall fear you! Also reused from Mania is playing the super code backwards disables the super music. Again reuse the code that turns all animals into Ricky. This new one, 19990306, is another birthday from a headcanon dev. Noah Mr. Poe Hall replaces all enemies in the entire game with Ice Cap's Penguinator because if you didn't feel they were unsettling before, well now they are everywhere. Everything is Penguinator. 20011013 is the birth date of yet another headcanon dev, Derek the Stone Banana Harbold. Harbold. Did I pronounce that? That doesn't matter. Which I guess is fitting because it replaces all items with, um, slippery banana peels. Was, was this a thing? Oh yeah, it was in the original game's competition mode. The more you know, I guess. 47981 randomizes all items, even though that was an option in Sonic 2's remaster. 32160 makes competition mode play like the main game, albeit they already made it look like the main game, and the peel-out code works with this too. 226372 prevents the camera from lagging behind a player at top speed with why is this a code? Why is it not just part of the main game? And the last one, 00000000 is supposed to remove all rings, items, and special stages. What? That can't be good. Oh, I see. Everything is just gone. Rings, shields, special rings. It's, I guess playing like this could be a real challenge. And that's all the codes in Sonic 3. There's no new placeable objects of note in debug mode. Mania's combine ring is here, but breaks the HUD. Okay, truthfully I had to rewrite this part of the script because I originally left this out of my Origins video thinking that this would fit better. In debug mode, you could still place 1-up boxes, and in anniversary mode, they've been replaced with coin boxes. And you could actually create infinite coins that actually adds to your coin total, but I should have recorded it because since the recent patch, it seems they have removed your ability to do so, which is a shame because I thought it was a very funny oversight, and I never took advantage of it. But it's not a complete loss, you can still place the randomizer monitors which still have a chance of being a 1-up so you can still do it like that. Never mind, turns out there's still another exploit that gives you infinite lives. Shh, Don't tell Sega this time! I've saved Sonic CD for last because there's not much to note. Being the first of the Retro Engine remasters, it doesn't have the same bells and whistles. Both the sound test and debug select are unlocked via the time attack mode and can be accessed in the extras menu. Due to the level select naming convention, it's revealed that level 2 was removed from the game and was never finished. Christian Whitehead even got to share some of the unused assets from this level. Using the sound test, which looks very different from the other sound test, you are able to gain access to a secret special stage and, um, I... I have no words. The original game was known to have hidden images revealed by putting codes in the sound test, but this version added a new one which is a screenshot of a new level designed by Christian Whitehead that was not approved to be added based on the mock-up of a cut level in Sonic 2. But in 2014, it was added to the game's files and can be accessed via modding. But this wasn't the end for Desert Dazzle as it was brought back in Sonic Mania as Mirage Saloon Zone. 
but with that aside, thanks so much for watching the video. If you wanted to try any of these codes out at home, there's a master list in the description of this video. Please share if you think people will like it, and stay tuned, and stay awesome.